from the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empey Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empey. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empey Presents. The first headline that I am going to share with you right now is heart moving. It just happened and it moved my heart so much as I saw the headline on television. The nation stops to remember 9-11. And Ground Zero Musk, our president, inflames the debate. That's another headline. And leaders gather a new push for peace in the Middle East. In fact, it's going on right now, and we're going to be talking much about that on this program. Is it really working? We all want to know, and we all pray that it will. Now, Jack came to me, and oh my, this blessed my heart this week. He came to me with more explanation about the venture of faith that he shared a little bit with you in our last program. But oh, Jack, it's so exciting. We got our ratings from our agents who service 40 different ministries. And they said, you are in first place for an individual program to reach more of the nation than anyone else at 87%. Well, I got fired up. I called the agents and said, what will it take in order for us to be able to reach 100% of America every week till Jesus comes or till God calls me home? Now, for the great news, a week later, they analyzed every area of the nation. They said, 40 more stations, and you will be the first individual program to reach every single part of the nation, every single county, city, town, hamlet, <laughs> mile, and to the inch. Praise the Lord. And that's going to all happen now in about three to four weeks. And you know, God has already allowed us to see 2,500,000 come to Christ. And this gives us even a greater opportunity. So let's thank the Lord and remember us in prayer because it's a great undertaking by faith. Oh, now, knowing Jack Van Ippy, I knew that you were going to be enthused to take 100%. 87% is not you. Not enough. No, <laughs> I want all America for Jesus. And we're doing it in Canada already because it's a smaller area. Oh, yes, yes absolutely. Well, you know, friends, it happens about this time of the year when the people of the Jewish faith have the observance of Rosh Hashanah, and that is their Happy New Year. Take a look at the Jerusalem Report. It says, the Jerusalem Report staff wish our readers a Happy New Year. Also, Happy Rosh Hashanah. Israel's population reaches 7.6 million. Prime Minister Vladimir Putin wishes Russian Jews a Happy Rosh Hashanah. There are many, many who live there, by the way. Of course, this is David Ben-Gurion. And uh, my, he is now sitting in his office there in Tel Aviv. He Jack. was David Hron. Yes. And that's green in English and became David Ben-Gurion. All right, David Ben-Gurion reading the Declaration of State of Israel 1948. They became a nation again. And here you see something that I was not aware of, the great invasion of Arab armies. Now, the war started on the first night of the state's existence, four different nations. And here they're coming against this very small defense force, and yet Israel, of course, won. Our president was the first to congratulate Ben-Gurion. President Truman, the United States, recognized Israel as the first nation to recognize him. Now, there is Abi Ibn. And he's the ambassador to the United Nations of the first one that they sent there. By the way, I did interview him. It was very, very, very interesting. Now, as I said a moment ago, friends, our president was the first to recognize Israel once again as a nation. You know, they were a nation. It was taken away from them. They scattered throughout the world, and they became a nation again in 1948. We were the first nation to recognize them, Jim. That's right, and that's why God has blessed America. And I thank God for that old Baptist, Harry Truman, and a good Democrat. <laughs> 
<laughs> there you go. Well, you know there's an Old Testament prophecy. In fact, some of the Old Testament prophets of uh, Judaism gave something in the Old Testament that was very, very interesting to me, and it was called a three-day miracle. Three-day miracle. Could you explain that to us, please, Jack? Oh, this is really exciting. Now, the Bible mentions in Matthew 24, 32, that Israel would become a nation. He talks about the fig tree blossoming in Matthew 24, verse 32. I had one of these preachers a number of years ago say, that Van Impey doesn't know what he's talking about. Nowhere does the Bible say that Israel is the fig tree. Really? Joel 1, 7, there's a war going on centuries ago, and the nation was called Israel. And it says they barked, they stripped Israel, my fig tree. Then in Hosea 9:10. Yahweh God says, I saw your fathers as the first ripened in my fig tree. So this would be a time when they would come back to life. And right after Hitler was put down and six million Jews were murdered, they had a clamoring in their hearts to go home. And Ezekiel 36, 24 says, I'll take you from among the Gentiles, Galilee of all nations, and bring you into your own land. It's happened. And Amos 9, 15 says, I'll plant them in their own land, and they shall no more be pulled up out of their land, which I, the Lord God, Yahweh, have given them. They're there forever. And I'm going to tell you something right now. When they came back, they erected the flag on May 14, 1948, the six-pointed star of David, and said, we again call ourselves Israel. Now, the land does not belong to the Arabs or to the Palestinians. I checked this out this week. Take the Old Testament and put in the word Israel and you'll find that over 2,200 times it mentions Israel as owning the land. Now, how are you going to get around that? Now, you know, this Helen Thomas there, when she blew off at that press conference at the White House, didn't know what she's talking about when she told the Jews to go back to Germany and Poland. It's their land. It's always been their land. And I'm dogmatic about that because I've got 2,200 Bible references to back it. So when they came back, and why did they come back? Because in 70 A.D., Vespasian and Titus, Roman generals, father and son, went to Jerusalem, killed one million Jews, and drove the rest of them around the world. And they were out of land, though it was theirs. And when they came back, they said, we call ourselves what we always call ourselves, Israel. And we're here to stay. In Isaiah 56, 5, as God speaking, says, I will give Israel an everlasting name. Thank you, Lord. But this three-day miracle, Rexella, yes. you want to know that the Lord is coming, that it's right at the door? Here's something most of you have never even heard me explain. Hosea 6, verses 2 and 3. Now, the Jews taught that a day is like 1,000 years in God's sight, Psalm 90, verse 4. The Christians taught it in 2 Peter 3, 8. A day is like a 1,000 years. A 1,000 years is like a day. So watch this now because it's talking about what would happen to the Jews in the 20th century. Are you listening? After two days, he will revive us. 2,000 years almost passed when they hit 1948 and they were revived after being driven out in 70 A.D., and on the third day, in this particular hour of history, he will raise us up that we may live in his sight. The Lord's coming back. He's going to set up his kingdom in Jerusalem, Luke 1, 31 and 32. Gabriel the angel said to the Virgin Mary, your son shall be great and he sh shall be called the son of the highest and he shall sit upon the throne of his father David in Jerusalem and he shall reign over the house of Jacob, over the house of Israel forever and forever and of his kingdom there'll be no end. All right, on the third day he'll raise us up and the third day started right at 2000. And soon he's going to raise them up. We go first in the rapture. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them, with the dead, in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. That is called the rapture. That's for the Christian. And we're caught up. And then we're in glory with the Lord Jesus for seven years as he investigates our works and we are married to him at the great marriage in Revelation 19, verse 7. Then we return with him. 
Now, this is for the Jew. When Christ returns with the armies from heaven in Revelation 19, 14, it's the hour when he raises all the Old Testament Jews from their graves. I didn't know that, and I'm a Jew. There'll be a resurrection? Yes. Job 19, 25 and 26. Job says, I know that my Redeemer liveth and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth and though after my skin worms destroy my body, yet in my flesh, <laughs> I'm going to see God. That's resurrection for the Jews. And when Christ comes, he raises them so they can live and reign with him for the thousand years along with the Christians in Revelation 20, verse 4. But where are they raised? Daniel 12, 2. Many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall arise. Jews! Some to everlasting life and some to shame and contempt. It's here, Rex He's going to come at any moment to call us home. And seven years later, he comes to set up that kingdom. And you can't miss it in Hosea 6, verses 2 and 3. Let me quote it again. In two days, he'll revive us. 1948, 2,000 years. And the third day, 2,000 onward, he'll raise us from the dead. And I'll tell you, it's very near. Oh, Jack, that's so exciting. I don't know really, friends, how anyone uh, can deny everything Jack said. Because I'm thinking maybe you don't believe the Old Testament. Well, it's history. History is there. And the Old Testament certainly prophesied history before it ever happened, but it did happen. Now, I have a question for Jack, maybe going through your mind right now. Is it in the New Testament? You know, that's something that's just a little more relevant to today. Jack, how about it? Is it in the new? Oh, yes. Uh, we can go over and over again. I already quoted uh, about the fig tree in Matthew 24, 32, and that Israel would become a nation, and that he's going to come again and raise them from the dead, as I just said. And I'm telling you something. When will we Christians go home? Now, we don't set a day or an hour. Matthew 24, verse 33 says, you will know when it's near, even at the door. The Greek imperative is, I command you to know when it's near, even at the door. Some of you could say, oh, nobody can know the day and the hour, Matthew 24, 36. Wait a minute, you got it out of context, as I said a couple of weeks ago. You start with verse 33. You will know when it's near. I command you to know when it's near, even at the door, but not the day and the hour, three verses farther. So we don't set dates. But you know, this is interesting because we hear so much about December 21st, 2012. The end of the world. Oh, no, 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 no. It's a world without end. Isaiah 45, 17, Ephesians 3, 21. There's six verses in the Bible that talk about the end of the world and they're incorrectly interpreted. And that is in Matthew 13, verses 39, 40, 49, Matthew 24, 3, Matthew 28, 20, and Hebrews 9, 26. The only six terms in the Bible using end of the world. It should say end of the age of grace. There's seven dispensations. Number six is grace. Number seven is the millennium. Now, let me prove that. Matthew 24, 3. The disciples said, Lord, what's going to be the sign of your coming? And of the end of the age of grace before the age of the millennium begins. How do I know that's true? Turn the page. <laughs> Chapter 25, verse 31. He comes with all of his angels in glory and power to sit on David's throne, as I said earlier, in Luke 1, 32 and 33, to rule and reign from that throne for a thousand years, Revelation 20, verse 4. Then he's recommissioned in 1 Corinthians 15, 24 to 28, and he rules from David's throne forever and forever and forever. Revelation 11, 15, the kingdoms of this world, not heaven, the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our God and his Christ, and he shall reign forever. How long is forever? Forever. 